Hello and welcome to EFFORT Clinical Trial Training. I'm Sophie, the Clinical Trial Monitor for EFFORT from Menzies in Darwin, Australia. This video series will go over study conduct and procedures so you can start the trial with confidence. I would advise you to read over the protocol before you start these videos. The protocol dictates the study procedures, follow-up and lab processing. Let's commence the clinical trial study overview. The EFFORT clinical trial in Cambodia will be run in partnership between Menzies, Moru and CNN. Menzies is the sponsor, which means we take responsibility for the initiation, conduct, management and some of the financing of the clinical trial. I'll quickly go over a background and rationale to the EFFORT clinical trial. If you are interested in the full scientific write-up, please refer to the protocol. Vivax malaria is an important public health issue. Vivax malaria is associated with significant morbidity, and policymakers have begun to recognise the importance of its control and ultimate elimination. Radical cure of Vivax malaria involves blood stage treatment and a liver stage treatment. The options we have available are primaquine or tofenaquine. One risk of primaquine and tofenaquine is that it can induce hemolysis in G6PD deficient individuals, requiring a point of care test prior to the administration of these medications to ensure safety. It is hypothesized that the EFFORT trial could inform policy for Vivax malaria treatment in your country. There have been major advances in the tools to tackle P. Vivax and continue on the road to elimination. Single dose tofenaquine, seven day primaquine, and point of care G6BD diagnostics. IMPROV, a large multi-centre study, showed high-dose 7-day primaquine was safe and non-inferior to 14-day primaquine. In the EFFORT trial, we wish to compare these novel tools and treatments against the current standard practice. We also want to look at their safety, effectiveness cost and feasibility of introducing these new treatment regimens into your country.
following enrollment into the clinical trial, the participants will be randomised into one of the following treatment arms. The possibilities are primaquine 14 days, primaquine 7 days and tafenaquine single dose. All participants who are enrolled will receive shizontocidal treatment, Pyramax. Shizontocytal treatment in Cambodia, as mentioned before, is Pyramax. Pyramax is taken orally with water once daily for three days. Dosing will be according to body weight and the treatment tables are contained within the protocol. Common side effects are headache, vomiting and an abdominal pain. Pyramax is contraindicated in individuals with severe liver disease. There are two primaquine treatment arms in the EFFORT clinical trial. The control arm is 14 day low dose primaquine, a total dose of 3.5 milligrams per kilo. The first intervention arm is seven day high dose primaquine, a total dose of seven milligrams per kilo. Treatment will start on day zero, day of enrollment, and the first dose given under supervision. Participants will receive the remaining tablets to be taken at home with instructions on how to complete and when to come back. It is requested that participants stay after the first dose for 30 minutes and if they vomit, a repeat dose should be administered. The dosage for primaquine is according to body weight, it is taken orally with water and it must be taken with food. Some side effects of primaquine that have been reported is heartburn, abdominal discomfort and skin rash. In rare cases, primaquine has been associated with hemolytic anemia and we have a management guideline if any suspected hemolysis. The second intervention arm is tafenaquine. 300 milligrams of tafenaquine will be given to anyone randomised into this second intervention arm. This is a single dose, taken orally with a drink of water and given with some food. Side effects that have been reported from tafenaquine are headache, diarrhoea and dizziness. And like primaquine, there is a risk of hemolytic anemia and in this case it is necessary to recheck G6PD and follow the management of hemolysis guideline. Feel free to take a break before we go over the criteria for enrolment in the EFFORT trial. Inclusion criteria must be met for enrolment in the trial. The inclusion criteria are, is P. vivax mono infection as determined by microscopy, G6PD normal status as determined by the biosensor and the pre study survey to determine the male adjusted male median in your region. The participant should have had a fever or currently have a fever, age of 18 years or older, they need to provide written informed consent and they should be living in the study area and willing to be followed for six months. The exclusion criteria for any participant is danger signs or symptoms of severe malaria. Anemia, as defined as a haemoglobin of less than 8 grams per deciliter. We will not accept any pregnant or lactating females and females should be given a pregnancy test to confirm. Regular use of drugs with haemolytic potential and any known hypersensitivity or allergy to any of the studied drugs means a participant must not be enrolled. 
So this is the flowchart of the steps to enrol a participant in the trial. The participant is screened at the clinic and assessed for inclusion criteria and does not meet any inclusion, exclusion criteria. They will then be consented and randomised. The randomisation envelopes will be provided to you and they are in numerical order. These are prepared by a statistician, so it is necessary to only open one at a time and always take from the next envelope in line. The randomization envelope will indicate whether the participant has been randomized into either the control arm or one of the intervention arms. During clinical trials, we are systematic in collecting data and the following are some of the forms and logs that are necessary for data integrity during the trial and participant safety. There is a delegation log for staff. This ensures that staff are qualified and experienced to be working on the clinical trial. You will be requested to submit your CV for further documentation. You will be delegated your role in the trial by the site PI and you should sign and initial this log in agreement with your role in the trial. The screening log is one of the other required documents to maintain data integrity of the trial. Screening logs can help identify generalizability in the trial and reduce bias. The screening log is for every participant who is screened for entry into the trial, regardless of whether they are enrolled or not. On the screen now, you can see the current effort screening log for Cambodia. Across the top we have inclusion and exclusion criteria as well as was the patient eligible and was the patient enrolled followed by the date the informed consent was signed. What's just popped up on the screen now is an example of a screening log from another trial site I've just put this here to highlight that you cannot use ditto marks to indicate the date. You must complete the entry in full. The subject ID log is a different log and it is the only log that contains the patient's names and links the patient with his or her subject number. Their contact detail is recorded on this log. This log should be kept in the investigator site file and locked away and must not be moved off the site. The sample storage log is to keep track of the important samples that will be collected throughout the effort clinical trial and especially when those samples need to be shipped to the reference lab. This is a record of when those samples were collected, processed and what date they will be sent or have been sent. The consent form is one of the most important documents in the trial and the consent form in Khmer language is shown on the left here. The form is also available in English. When obtaining informed consent for the effort trial, adequate information must be provided. Ensure that the participant has comprehended the information satisfactorily and respond to any of their questions comprehensively. You must ensure that participants are aware that declining to enter the study will not prevent them from receiving normal standard medical care. Participants must personally sign and date the informed consent form. Study staff cannot date for the participant. The name of the participant can be written by the study staff and a copy of the consigned consent form must be given to the participants.
That completes the first video for the EFFORT clinical trial. Please remember in the trial to practice within GCP guidelines. Patient safety is our priority. As I mentioned at the beginning, hemolysis is a risk in participants taking primaquine and tafenaquine. You should be aware of the warning signs of a hemolytic serious adverse event. This is covered in the safety video which follows after this and we also have a hemolytic event management guideline available with the SOPs. Thanks again.